And this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. He said because it is there. Well, space is there. Hello everyone, welcome to the newest episode of The Space Show, episode 17. I'm your host as always, Nick Pariachi. Thank you, thank you. And we're going to be going over the dates, May 14th through May 15th, which is today, Wednesday, 2024. And if you haven't already subscribed, I suggest subscribing because we're getting three days of space news a week. I mean, who doesn't want that? Make sure to hit that bell so you know when I'm uploading, but it's usually going to be 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time Zone. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into it. And now for astronomy, we're going to have the moon at first quarter. And then for launches, we just have one of them, the Soyuz 2.1b Cosmos Unknown Payload. I doubt you're going to be able to watch that, but if you can, it's going to be Thursday, May 16th, 2024 at 4 p.m. Eastern Time Zone. And without further ado, let's go into... And let's get on to astrobiology and astrophysics. Now, MIT researchers, including several undergraduate students, have discovered three of the oldest stars in the universe located in our own galactic neighborhood. These stars, found in the Milky Way's halo, are estimated to have formed between 12 and 13 billion years ago during the formation of the first galaxies. Dubbed SAS, S-A-S-S, small accreted cellular system stars, the researchers believe that each star originally belonged to its own small primitive galaxy that was probably later absorbed by the Milky Way. These stars now orbit the outskirts of the Milky Way where researchers suspect there may be more ancient stellar survivors. In quotes from the MIT professor of physics, Anna Frabel, states that these oldest stars should definitely be there given what we know of galaxy formation. And she also goes on to state, they are part of our cosmic family tree, and we now have a new way to find them. The researchers hope to fuse these SAS stars as analogs of ultra-faint dwarf galaxies, which are thought to be some of the universe's first ever galaxies. Such galaxies are still intact today, but are still too distant and faint for an in-depth study. Since SAS stars are much closer, they honestly could provide key insights into the evolution of these early galaxies. Very cool story. And now, an international team of astronomers have conducted an extensive photometric and scapusoptic observation of a type IBN supernovae, known as SN 2023 FYQ. The results, published on May 7th, reveal a significant precursor activity, including pre-explosion outbursts. Supernovae, crucial for understanding star and galaxy evolution, are divided into type 1, which is lacking hydrogen, and type 2, which is showcasing hydrogen. Now, type IBN supernovae, a subclass, have narrow helium lines and short-lived light curves. Now, discovered on April 17th, 2023, by the Zwicky Transient Facility, SN2023 FYQ is one of the closest type IBN supernovae located about 59 million light years away in the galaxy NGC 4388. It was classified after a rapid rebrightening on June 23rd, 2023. And this was led by Yi's Dong of University of California, Davis, and now, the team has monitored SN2023 FYQ since 2019, identifying precursor emissions up to three years before the explosion. The activity is linked to mass transfer in a binary system of low-mass helium star and a compact companion. The final rise in the light curve, occurring about 40 days before the explosion, was likely due to core silicone burning or a runaway mass transfer. The explosion could result from the core collapse of a helium star or its merger with its companion. Very cool story and it shows you how far back things can date. 2019! That's a while. And on to... And let's get on to space discoveries. 
And now, an international team led by researchers from the exotic laboratory of the University of Liège, in collaboration with MIT and the Astrophysics Institute in Andalusia, has discovered a new exoplanet named WASP-193b, an exceptionally low-density giant orbiting planet that orbits around a sun-like star. Located about 1,200 light years away, WASP-193b is actually 50% larger than Jupiter, but seven times less massive, making its density actually comparable to that of cotton candy. Now, WASP is actually the second least dense planet actually discovered to date. Now, the density is approximately 0.059 grams per cubic centimeter, much lower than Jupiter's 1.33 grams per cubic centimeter and Earth's 5.51 grams per cubic centimeter. Researchers believe WASP-193b is composed mainly of hydrogen and helium, forming a highly inflated atmosphere. This discovery challenges existing planetary formation theories as current models cannot really explain this extreme inflation. Future observations, particularly those ones with the James Webb Space Telescope, are expected to provide further insights into this cosmic mystery. Very cool. Cotton candy? Seriously? And now, astronomers have identified the largest known protoplanetary disk containing planet-making ingredients swirling around a young star. The colossal disk spans about 3,300 times the distance between Earth and the Sun and holds enough gas and dust to potentially form supersized planets in distant orbits. According to U.S. and German researchers, initially detected in 2016, the disk around a star... 1,000 light years away was confirmed to be a site of a planet formation through recent observations using telescopes in Hawaii. This massive disk, designated as IRAS 23077-23077, is about twice the size of that previous record holder. In quotes, it's so massive and rich in dust and gas that scientists can learn more about the birth and evolution of our worlds beyond our own, said the lead author, Christina Mons of Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Images of the disk reveal a butterfly-like shape with a dark, dusty strip resembling the body and blue and white lobes resembling wings. Findings were published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters Future observations by NASA's Hubble and Webb Space Telescopes may reveal whether giant planets the size of Jupiter or larger are forming within this disk. Moss said, we just have to look for them. I mean, it's simple as that. And on to... And on to space tech. Now, star and planet formation begins with gravitational collapse of a massive cloud of gas and dust, creating environments where massive stars emit intense radiation while more modest stars like our sun develop planet-forming disks rich in organic materials. A team of astrophysicists from Western University, including Elias Peters and Jan Kami, and their postdoctoral and graduate researchers, were among the first to use James Webb Space Telescope for scientific research focusing on star formation. This team pointed Webb towards the Orion Bar within the Orion Nebula, collecting detailed images and spectroscopic data. The collected data revealed in intricate details of the Orion Bar a sharp diagonal ridge of gas and dust. Now, the Webb images actually showed complex structures and allowed researchers to create a detailed mass of temperature, temp density, and radiation field strength within the nebula. The data are incredible and will serve as benchmarks for astrophysics and research for decades to come, said Peters. Their research published in the series of papers, of course, in the astronomy and astrophysics, including findings on the chemical makeup and physical conditions of the nebula, as well as behavior, about the polysilical aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHS, large carbon-bearing molecules, which are crucial for understanding cosmic carbon reservoirs. 
Machine learning techniques further enhance their analysis, revealing how UV radiation actually affects these PAH, or I'll say PA, sizes and structures. The web data provided unprecedented detail confirming the impact of the UV radiation on molecular survival in harsh interstellar environments. And I'm pretty sure this is the most detailed map of Orion we actually have. So I'll put the picture, of course, on the screen, but very cool. And on to... Now let's wrap it up with space exploration. Now NASA is conducting a week-long field test in Arizona's San Francisco volcanic field to prepare for a moon exploration during the Artemis campaign. Astronauts Kate Rubens and Andre Douglas are wearing mock-up spacesuit systems as they complete various technological demonstrations and science operations in the lunar-like landscape. Now, this test actually involves two integrated teams. One of the teams is in the Arizona desert conducting simulated moonwalks, and the other at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, monitoring and guiding these activities. The goal is to actually practice end-to-end -end lunar operations in preparation for the Artemis missions, and lessons learned from this test will be applied to Artemis, Artemis missions, commercial vendor development, and technological development. This test is actually the fifth in a series led by NASA, and is probably the most realistic Artemis moonwalk simulation to date. Excited for that very cool test. And now Boeing Starliner. Of course, I think everyone's heard it's faced yet another delay due to technological issues. This mission will now be postponed to May 21st. Unsure what day that is, but it's soon, it's soon. The setback comes after engineers found a small helium leak in the spacecraft's service module, which holds instruments for the spacecraft's control and operation. This delay adds to the mission's year-long delays and comes amid a safety crisis affecting Boeing's commercial aviation arm. Now, NASA is really depending on Starliner's success to certify a second commercial vehicle for crewed International Space Station missions following the SpaceX's Dragon capsule certification in 2020. And let's wrap it up. And of course, if you watch this long, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell because who doesn't like three days a week of space news? I mean, we've already uploaded two days this week. I mean, is that enough space news? I don't think it is. Bruh. So let's upload. Next upload is going to be on Friday. So stay tuned for that one, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time Zone. And with further, without further ado, remember, be bold. Be original. Be invincible.